I'm Bill Tucker and I have a boat bike. Now, I also have a friend who recently told me, Bill, I'm, I'm just not a creative person. I don't, you know, I'm just, I just can't make up ideas. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about how to do that. Tools for creativity, things to do. Now, um, uh, you, might, you might need some tools for creativity if you're standing in front of 200 people with a blank slide. Um, I guess some traditional ways you might go about fixing that are to go to a meeting or have some brainstorming. I'm not a real big fan of brainstorming. I'd much rather see people take out post-it notes and post ideas to the wall and then come back later, make an affinity diagram, pull out ideas. But frequently meetings and brainstorming is, is where people start. And there's, there's great things about being able to riff off other people's your ideas, your friends. There's also a bunch of negative things like the the social contract, things you can't say in front of other people, and some of the ridicule that happens when you don't like other people and you want to make fun of their ideas. <laughs> so uh, there's some natural places people have ideas. Driving in the car, taking a shower, asleep. Maybe tonight you all have three chances to have some ideas. Um, now they, all these have three things in common, or a few things in common, that you're alone, you're relaxed. And it's a ritual, it's something you do sort of mindlessly. No, nobody's coming there demanding an answer. Um, if you listen to John Cleese, this is what you need. You need to be isolated in time and space. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if that was true, that you could do that? I've got a 19-month-old and um, bosses, and people always want ideas. They want answers to questions. We have crises like a blank slide in front of 200 people, and we have to solve them right now. So the, the way to do that is to look at our thinking. So if you look at this horizontal line, it's sort of a thought rut. That's our traditional thinking. We need ways, some lateral thinking techniques, some ways to push us out of that thought rut we're in towards some other ideas that might be out there that we haven't considered. The classic example is uh, a truck goes under a bridge and doesn't make it. The policeman stops the bus for, or truck for a couple hours, and a little kid comes up and says, why don't you take the air out of the tires and lower the truck down and back it up? And it's because, you know, you got angry people there and you just you just can't think of that. It seems obvious, but it's not because we're stuck in these thought ruts. We need real tools to get us into these other areas. And if this looks like a Lovecraft elder sign, please forgive me. So, there's, so uh, without any hookahs or beanbags, here's what I'm going to propose. Uh, random words, some provocations by Edward de Bono, and then asking questions from some of the leading uh, improvement um, protocols that are out there for engineering. So random word, why would that work? It's just, it has nothing related to what I'm doing, but if you take a word like, like revolver, it spins, it has different compartments, it creates a bang, it, th there's all these things. How can I apply that to my idea or my problem, my situation? I've got a friend named Mike, he has a fiberglass um, company, and he doesn't have, um, he didn't have a product to make, he likes hunting and fishing. He picked barrel, and he thought, oh, I'll make a uh, pot-bellied tree stance. And now he sits in his underwear in his garage opening checks. So it does work. <laughs> um, here's some of those provocations. You need to escape, get out of it, reverse, wishful thinking. Well, wouldn't it be great if this happened or exaggerate some of the situations? Let's take email as an example. You know, I've got way too much email. What can I do? I'll just stop checking it. You know, if it's important, they'll call me. Um, you know, reverse it, have the email check me. Do you want to send that spam message? 10,000 people already have got it. Wishful thinking, wouldn't it be great if I just noticed messages that are important, like Gmail's priority inbox? Or how about an exaggeration, make it even greater amount of email so I can't use traditional techniques. Trees is this Russian problem solving technique. They, if you have a technical problem with a carbon what's it that needs to be connected to a titanium thingamajig, this is a great thing to look at. It breaks down into a bunch of different ideas. Um, lean thinking, Six Sigma, has a bunch of ideas that are designed for companies to break them, break down your costs and reduce them, make work things really efficiently. And some of you are thinking, well, great, I'm a graphic designer or I write books or stories. How does that help me? Well, you could take these same allegories and say, like, well, if I want to eliminate waste, maybe I can remove some of these characters from the store. Maybe some of these words can go. Maybe this image can be smaller or different and have less things optimize my inventory? Do I have the right number of chapters or, or conversations for me to communicate the ideas I'm trying to do? So to put it all together, you need a timer and some paper. Write some of these ideas. Write some of these keywords down. Pass the paper around. Time, everybody. You got two minutes. Write as many ideas down and then pass it to your left. That way your friends get to riff off their own ideas and you don't have some of the uh, problems that happen. And we all know practice delivers results. So you have to practice these tools if you want to get better. So go out and solve some problems. 
with these creative tools. Thanks a lot, I'm Bill Tucker.